So shear moment diagrams help us know what is going on inside of beams by showing us the variations in the shear forces and the bending moments inside the beams. And that is so we can know how to design the beams to support the loads that we are putting on them. So even though when you work as an engineer, you'll probably be doing all this with computer software, as far as I see it, it's like when we were young, we were taught to do multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, but now we just use a calculator to do all those things. But by knowing that arithmetic, we know how to better use a calculator. And that'll probably be the same when you work as a professional engineer. You'll know what's going on and you'll know when the answer or what it comes out with looks right or doesn't. And so that's what we're going to go over in this video is how to make shear moment diagrams. And if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So shear moment diagrams are basically graph functions going across the length of the beam that show us the magnitude of the moment or shear at any point along that beam. And those functions are discontinuous because everywhere there is a point moment or a point load or a distributed load beginning or ending, those functions will have a sudden drop or a sudden increase, making them discontinuous and we have to account for that. And so we have to look at those functions one piece at a time and graph them accordingly. And basically what it comes down to is calculus because the integral of the loading function is the shear function and the integral of the shear function is the moment function. And that gives us a bunch of properties that helps us know how to graph the shear moment diagrams based on a given loading scenario. So that's what these points go over and you'll probably recognize them from calculus, but they are essential in understanding how the shear moment diagrams are gonna change based on your um, loading function. So let's look at these. First, we have the change in shear is equal to the integral of the loading function. So W is the loading function, V is the shear, and M is the moment function. So the area under the loading curve is the change in the shear function. So say we have a beam here, and we have a distributed load going across it like this and then we have our shear function well the amount of area under this curve or this line basically is going to be the amount that our shear changes so that's our shear and that's our loading function and say this is four kilonewtons per meter and it goes across six meters here well, the change in shear is going to be 24 kilonewtons, because six times 24, or six times four is 24 kilonewtons. And so it would change something like that with the distance here to here being 24 kilonewtons. And if it's positive area under the curve, then it is going to be a positive change in the next function, so in this case, shear. Um, and as engineers, we write it like this because it makes sense. There is a load going on top of the beam, pushing it down, and so we put it on top. But in a calculus standpoint, that doesn't really make any sense because this is actually area under the curve. It is making the shear function go down. And so if we were to draw this from a calculus standpoint, this would be area under the curve and therefore it would make the shear function drop. And you gotta watch for that because um, I'll show you why in a bit. But the area under the um, shear function is the change in the moment. So this area here is going to be the change in our moment function. And so from this point to this point, it is going to go up whatever this is um, from here to here. We'll take that area and it will change by this much. This is positive area, so it is going to go up. So whatever this area is, that will be how much our moment function goes up. 
and then likewise this is negative area and we'll take the area under the curve there and it will drop that much and so this was would be our moment function so these next two are basically a come from these um, basically the integrals of the shear and loading functions in that if there's a positive slope it is going to be concave up the next diagram is going to be concave up and so we see that here or at least the next one if it's a negative slope it's concave down this slope on the shear diagram is negative and so the moment function is concave down if it was going the other way something like this then we would have this be concave up then this kind of also comes into play from these it's just another way of looking at it the magnitude of the loading at any point is the value of the slope so because this is a constant value for the loading it's going to have a constant slope this doesn't have a constant um, value for the shear so it's not going to have a constant slope like we see with the moment and so right here on the shear we see that it has a high um, value of shear so right here it's going to have a higher slope than say up here where this value of shear isn't quite as high so this part of the slope isn't as high and say if we change this so that our um, loading function was triangular like that well then our shear function first we need to look at this and remember that that is area under the curve so it is going to change from being a negative slope to a positive slope like that that will throw you off if you don't recognize that it's there but because that's a positive slope our shear function is going to be concave up and it's negative area so it's going to be going down so it might look something like this where right here is a high value of the loading function so this value of the sh slope right here on the shear is going to be high but as it moves along it the shear um, is or the loading is decreasing in magnitude so the slope is also decreasing and basically all that also translates into the shear and moment as well and for our last point where the shear equals zero the moment um, is at a max or min so say we have a shear diagram that looks something like that well here on our moment diagram this is concave this is going to be concave down because this is a negative slope um, going to be like this and here at this point where it crosses the axis where it's zero the slope is going to be zero and therefore it is at a maximum point if it was going the other way well we'd have it concave down and this would be a minimum point here and the reason why that's important is because that is why we are making shear and moment diagrams we want to find these points of maximum or minimum moment as well as maximum and minimum um, shear as well as um, where where it's happening and that way we can design those beams to withstand that magnitude of moment or that magnitude of shear and so on your shear moment diagrams it's important to label what that maximum value of moment will be and at what point it occurs and you'll often need to do that by finding at what point the shear function crosses that axis and that will help you be able to plug it into a function on here and be able to know what value that is going to be so the last thing I want to talk about for this is the first thing you're going to want to do when you're drawing shear and moment diagrams is you're going to want to solve for your reaction forces on your beam and then you're going to want to draw a free body diagram of that beam 
And so that might look something like this. You have your beam here. You have your reaction force at A and B. And then say you have a point load here and say you have a point moment at this point. Well, you're gonna wanna draw your shear and moment diagrams right under those so they can line up and label them so you know which ones they are. And in between these two points, there's nothing going on, so it's gonna be a flat line. Your A is gonna push it up on your shear as high the magnitude of that force A, or your reaction force A, and then it's not gonna change because there's nothing in here that's changing until you get to this load, which is going to drop it. And then, because this is a point moment, that's not gonna affect your shear diagram. So it's just gonna go all the way until it hits another point, which it'll jump back up to zero. And that helps us know it checks out because um, once it goes back to zero, we know that that um, that we did our math right. And then looking at our moment diagram, the area under the curve here is going to be the amount of change. It's a positive area, so it's going to be going up. And so we'll line it up, go along this point. So we'll find the area under here, and that will be this value right here. That will be how, how high it goes up. And then all this area under here is negative, so it's gonna be dropping down. So it's gonna come like this, but we also need to make sure we include this point moment because that's gonna cause our moment diagram to jump up or jump down. And so we'll draw this to this point. We, found, we find the area of this, and then that's how much it's gonna be changing. And we might wanna just find it up to this point to see how much it changes in that point and draw up to that. So say it drops down from here to there, whatever this area is. And then we have our point moment and we're gonna wanna figure out the which way it's gonna jump, whether it's gonna be up or down. And the way you're gonna know whether that is going up or down is looking at it, we would call that, um, if we were summing moments, we would call that a positive moment because it um, is going in the counterclockwise direction. But we're dealing with internal forces here, so we need to know what forces are going to counteract that and resist that movement. And because it would be resisting it going the opposite way, that would be a negative moment. And so it is going to be a drop downwards and then after that, our function will continue as normal. We'll add up the area under the curve here. It's a negative area, so it's gonna be going down, and it will finish out something like that. Again, since it's the same intensity all the way along here on the shear, it's gonna have the same slope along here on the moment diagram. So that is how you draw shear moment diagrams. I highly recommend you watch an example video of mine. Um, you can click on this, link to go to one of those and there will also be links at the end of this video click on to go watch an example problem and that will help you better understand more complicated things of what's going on with the changes in the shear moment diagrams so if you have any questions or suggestions leave them down in the comments and i've been making some awesome designs with student engineering logo and putting them on shirts and stuff like the one on my shirt here if you're interested in stuff like this you can click on the links down in the description. That'll take you to places where you can buy them and that helps me out a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering. And my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.